So now there's a turbo on my car, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to start thinking about management. Now, you can't just put a turbo on a car and drive it like that, because the computer and the air fuel ratios, they're all set up for a car that doesn't have a turbo. So when you're putting in double the air, for example, you have to put in double the fuel to match that. And the standard computer in the car, it doesn't know that there's a turbo on there and it has no way of adjusting the amount of fuel that goes in. It's just set at a fixed amount. So that's why I fit my air fuel ratio gauge or my wideband in the last video. Because when I fit my new computer, my new standalone management, when the car is uh, making more boost, more, more air is going into the engine, I can monitor the ratio between the air and the fuel that goes into the engine and we can compensate so we can put extra fuel in to match the amount of air. Now that's the theory behind it, but how are we actually going to make that happen? How are we able to tell the car what we want it to do? The standard ECU, there's no way of doing that. The parameters and the settings in the computer, they're just fixed and that's that. There are people out there, or one person in particular that I'm thinking of, who can actually take the chip out of the mother of, of the computer and he can do some um, computer tricks with it and then put it back in. But he's the only person that can do it and he's quite expensive. So if I was to go there, drive, have my car trailered 300 miles and then uh, for whatever reason the car wasn't to work, maybe the clutch started slipping or maybe the alternator packed in and the voltages weren't running properly on the car, anything like that. Well, you still got to pay £550 whether you get your map or whether you don't. So that was sort of um, on my mind when choosing what to do with management. A standalone ECU is about £800 and by the time you've bought the other bits and bobs to make it all work, you're looking at about £1,000. So I thought to myself, it only takes two goes, maybe if I have go to the um, person who can map the standard ECU, say it doesn't work, and then I go again, well I've just spent £1,100, not including transport. So that's dead money really, isn't it? Whereas if I invest £800, £1,000 in a standalone ECU, and then I can go to um, a mappers who's going to charge me about £300 to map the ECU, I'm looking at about... Um, 1200 quid so it's a little bit more but I've got a valuable ECU at the end of it and much more features so you probably want to know what this ECU is that I'm using so I'll show you through the purchase that I so this is the ECU company that I decided to go with um, a friend of mine's used this ECU company and they've been pretty good motorsport electronics they also provide mapping as well and for the technology that's in that ECU the price that you pay is very competitive and also the mapping is very competitive on mapping too. So I'm going to have to remove this cap and then I can continue. So yeah, Motorsport Electronics, although I have not got much personal contact with the company, I have seen how they deal with their customers and to be honest they seem much better than the competition in that regard. So this is my uh, order box obviously I've opened it but um, basically I come with a few uh, leaflets just showing the services that the company can provide such as mapping um, and some instructions for the various parts that I've bought so the parts that I bought to avoid any confusion and just make things much easier were um, an inlet air temperature sensor I thought if I use their sensors, then obviously they're going to be uh, proven to work on this ECU. Also, I had a boost solenoid kit, which come with some lines. I have a map sensor. And an, I think it's called an FTDI cable. So long story short, this just allows my laptop to communicate with my computer. And here, this is the main piece, the ECU. So, 
actually really small. I was surprised how small it is, but the size of it doesn't really have any uh, effect on whether it can run my engine or not. But I couldn't believe how little it was. And then I have an unterminated loom. So long story short, it's the connector that goes into the ECU and all the wires one and a half meters long. So I'm, I probably won't need all those wires, but at least they're there and I can run them to injectors, map sensors, whatever. So let's just talk about some of the benefits that come from running this Motorsport Electronics ECU or a standalone ECU in general. As we were talking about earlier, the ECU, the standard ECU, it doesn't know if there's any boost in the car. So when I put my foot down and the turbo starts to spool, this map sensor is what actually will be able to detect the pressure in the intake system. So they can, the ECU can read that the pressure's building, the boost level's building, and then it can adjust the fuel in. Sometimes as well, with the turbo, perhaps um, you want to have uh, an adjustable boost level. Maybe when I'm driving, I want to have two maps, maybe one at 150 horsepower, for example, and another at 200. Well, this is where this comes in handy. It's uh, an electronic boost solenoid. This will allow me to, or the mappers, allow them to set the boost level from the ECU. So the ECU can actually control how powerful the car is and how much the turbo works. The other benefits are it can have the turbo at 100% boost so that it will spool at as fast as possible. And then as soon as it gets to the target boost, it will then reduce the boost to keep it there. So say the target is 7 PSI, for example, it will go 100% up to 7 PSI as fast as possible. So the turbo kicks in and then it will keep it at that level. So that is what um, that is the benefit of that boost control uh, solenoid. Also, other benefits as well of this standalone system is um, if the ECU were to detect a problem, um, if you think about, now I've got the air fuel ratio gauge, um, say that the ECU has the ability to see, say that the car is leaning out and the air fuel ratios are wrong, it can see that information, then the ECU can interpret that and it will, it will have the ability through the boost control solenoid to cut boost or reduce the boost so that there's less like, likely to uh, cause damage. Also, a standalone ECU can improve reliability when used in the correct way. So, my air fuel ratio or my wide band gauge, um, that will be wired into the ECU. So, it gives the ECU the ability to see what the air fuel ratios are. So, it has that information. And say, for example, the ECU was to see that the car was leaning out, there was not enough fuel, and it would eventually damage the engine. Well, it can actually do something about that because it has a map sensor so it can see if there's um, a leaning out issue under boost and if there is, it can be programmed in such a way so that you can set it up that the boost solenoid will actually cut the boost for a short, uh, so it will effectively run as a naturally aspirated car or a lower powered car until the issue is resolved. So that's just one example out of many that the ECU can um, improve reliability. So hopefully after this little short video, you can see why financially I found, I found it made sense to invest in a standalone ECU because it's not dead money. There is a resale value to it and the benefits massively outweigh using the standard ECU and paying the expensive mapping costs and transport costs to get to the person who can do the standard ECU. And also I have um, an improved boost response thanks to the boost solenoid and also I can have adjustable maps so I can have double map, a low power and a high power for example and it also can use a map sensor which will allow the um, ECU to 
fuel according to the boost level, so accurate fueling. These are just some benefits, there's many benefits of running a standalone ECU, but these are just a couple that really sold the ECU to me. And my particular car, a 106 GTI, it doesn't have uh, adjustable valve control, uh, variable valve timing rather. But this ECU does actually support that and it supports a lot more features. So I would definitely consider looking at this particular model. And one final benefit I haven't mentioned yet is Motorsport Electronics. They have a database on their website. So they, every time they get a base map, they put it on their website so that people like me can use the base map. So the base map that I have been sent is um, for a 106 GTI that's running inline throttle bodies. Obviously, this is not going to run the car, um, you know, to be driven, but it should get the car started. And at the very least, it should roll the car. It should be able to power the car up onto a trailer so I can take it there.